right, let's uh, look at solving some logarithmic equations. Okay, so the first one that we have here is the log of x squared is equal to 2. The log of x squared is equal to 2. Um, so the key to this, since the variable is inside the logarithm, the only way to get that variable out of the logarithm is to write this in exponential form. Okay, that's why we went through the whole process of learning, converting between logarithmic and exponential forms. So, when there's not a base, what's it understood to be? 10. So, if we use our swoop, we've got 10 squared is equal to x squared. Now, just kind of by inspection, it seems like the answer should be 10, right? But there's also another solution, and here's why. 10 squared is equal to 100. 100 is equal to x squared. Anytime you take the square root, what are you supposed to remember? Positive and negative. Okay? Positive and negative 10 are solutions here. And you can, of course, check that by plugging it into your calculator. <clears throat> Just remember, anytime you square a negative number, you must put it in parentheses. So if I'm going to check negative 10 as a solution here, um, I have to add a set of parentheses because the log automatically has one, but I need to put an individual set around the negative 10, and that does give me an answer of 2. Okay, so positive and negative 10 are both solutions here. Let's look at D. The log base 7 of 3 minus x is equal to negative 1. Again, the variable is inside the logarithm, so the only way to get it out is to write this in exponential form. This time the base is 7. 7 to the negative first is equal to 3 minus x. So we need to subtract 3 from both sides. Well, what am I subtracting 3 from? 7 to the negative first is 1 7. I'm going to do this with our calculator. 3 expressed as something over uh, 7 is 21. So 1 minus 21 is negative 20 over 7 is equal to negative x. So that means that positive x is equal to positive 20 over 7. And we can, of course, check that. Now remember, most of your calculators do not let you change the base. Oops, got the 3 minus 3 minus 20 over 7. So to handle that, we do the change of base. So the log of the big number divided by the log of the base. And that does give us negative 1. So 20 over 7 is correct. Let's look at one that's a natural log. Look at one that's a natural log. So what's the base of the natural log? E. The base of the natural log is E. So when we write that in exponential form, it's E to the fourth is equal to 8x. Uh, now E is an irrational number, so if we raise that to the fourth power, it's just going to give us a nastier, bigger irrational number. So just leave it as E to the fourth divided by 8. And if I were to check that in my calculator, I would go ahead and type in the E to the fourth, close the parentheses, divided by 8, and then do the natural log of 8 times my answer. Four. That's how I would check. Okay. <clears throat> Feeling okay so far? Not too bad, right? Just got to put it in exponential form and solve for the variable. Okay, let's look at some exponential equations. Solving exponential equations here. <coughs> We've got 20 times 1 half to the x over 3 is equal to 5. <clears throat> okay, first step here, we're trying to solve for x. x is in the exponent, but 
we need to isolate the exponential expression first. We need to get this, the 1 half to the x over 3, by itself first. So we need to begin by dividing both sides by 20. So we've got 1 half to the x over 3 is equal to 5 over 20 reduces to 1 fourth. Now, at this step, when the exponential is isolated, you need to pause for a second and see if you can write the other side of the expression. In this case, we need to see if we can write the right side of this equation so that it has the same base as um, the, the part that has the variable. So can we rewrite one fourth as one half to some power? What's the relationship between 2 and 4 exponentially? 2 squared is 4. Well, guess what? 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So I'm going to rewrite 1 fourth as 1 half squared. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, so 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So if we have the same base on both sides, that must mean that the exponents are equal to each other. We have the same base on both sides, so the exponents are equal to each other. And then we can very easily solve and see that x is equal to 6. And we can very quickly check that. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 20 times 1 fourth is 5. <coughs> Okay. How about this one? 12 times 6 to the x plus 2 is equal to 1 third. Now, you cannot multiply the 12 and the 6. Okay? You can never change the base of the exponential unless you rewrite it in terms of exponents. So we need to start by dividing both sides by 12. Or since there's a fraction on the other side, it's the same as multiplying by 1 12th. So that gives us 1 over 36. 1 third divided by 12 is 1 over 36. So we have a base of 6 on the right, on the left side. <coughs> we would like for there to be a base of 6 on the right side. What's the relationship between 6 and 36? It's squared, okay? How can we get it in the denominator? A negative exponent. 6 to the negative 2 power is 1 over 36. Because 6 squared is 36, the negative moves it to the bottom. So that means x plus 2 must be equal to negative 2, which says x is equal to negative 4, negative, uh, checking it, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, so 6 to the negative 2 is 136, 12 times 1 over 36 is 1 third. Okay, now, these are going to get a little bit bigger. I'll give you a second on this problem, because we have multiple natural logs here, we're going to have to use our properties in natural logs to condense, okay, so that we have a single natural log on one side, a single natural log on the other side, and then we'll go from there, okay? So first of all, we have the natural log plus another natural log. What can we do with that? Multiply, okay? Now I'm going to use a bracket here just because you can end up with a whole bunch of such parentheses, so I'm just going to put a bracket around it, okay? So when you're adding two natural logs, you can make that be product within a single natural log. And on the right side, the other key to this is we don't want any coefficients. Okay, so we need to use our power rule to rewrite that right side as the natural log of x squared. Okay, so now that we have a single natural log on this side, a single natural log on that side, 
The only way it's going to be equal is if what's inside those natural logarithms are equal to each other. So I'm going to drop the natural logs, but only because it's on both sides. And then this just becomes a quadratic equation. We need to FOIL 3x minus 2 times x minus 1. So that's 3x squared minus 3x minus 2x, so minus 5x plus 2. Quadratics must be equal to 0. 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. Yes, I know that 2 and 1 do not add to give me 5, but if 1 of them gets multiplied by 2, it does. 2x minus 1 times x minus 2 will give us 2x squared minus 5x uh, plus 2. So set both of those equal to 0. and solve. So one half is potentially a solution and two is potentially a solution. And the reason why I say that is because um, I've been checking the answers, but it's especially important to check the answers on these problems. Okay, because, um, and actually I really don't even have to type it into my calculator. Looking at these, when I look at that second natural law from the original problem, if I plug in one half, one half minus one is negative one half. And what's one rule about, uh, about logarithms? You can't take the log of a negative number. So even the, the solution itself is not a negative number. When you plug it in right here, one half minus one is negative. So throw that one out. Two should be okay. Um, but it can't hurt for me to plug it back in to make sure it all checks out <clears throat> and adds up the way it's supposed to. Because you, you can catch some careless mistakes here. So 3 times 2 is 6, 6 minus 2 is 4. So the natural log of 4 plus the natural log of 1 should be equal to 2 times the natural log of 2. And it is. So we're good. x equals 2 is our only solution x equals one half is extraneous. We get it as an answer, but we've got to throw it out because it doesn't work. Okay, similar thing that we need to do with example B here. When you have multiple logarithms on one side, you've got to condense them to a single logarithm. But before we can do that, We've got a little problem here. There's a coefficient in front. Okay, coefficients have got to move before we can condense. So we've got to use our power rule. <coughs> now we can combine them into a single log. We are subtracting, so that becomes a quotient. Now, this one's a little bit different from the last problem. Okay, This one doesn't have a log on both sides. This one's like the very beginning, the first example that we did, when you've got a single log equal to a constant, we need to write that in exponential form. Well, we don't have a base to our log, so it's going to be 10, so that says 10 to the first is equal to x over x plus 4 squared. Well, to solve this, that x plus 4 squared needs to come out of the denominator, so we need to multiply both sides by x plus 4 squared. x plus 4 squared is not equal to x squared plus 16. So we've got to foil it out, x squared plus 8x plus 16 is equal to x. So we've got 10x squared plus 80x plus 160 is equal to x. 
gotta be equal to zero.